Hi guys and welcome again to my channel. So we are now on the episode 19 of our current series and in this video we're going to talk about the amortization table, specifically how to use this amortization table to answer the seven possible measurement questions related to accounting for loans payable. Okay? But before you go further with this video, please see the previous episodes, okay? So the links of those previous episodes are on the description below. But if you have finished them before going with this video, then let's get started. Well, here's the timeline technique and the amortization table. So in the past episodes, we have already proven that the timeline technique can actually be used to answer the seven possible measurement questions. So now in this video, let's see if this amortization table can do the same. Okay, so what's possible question number one again? So if you can still remember, the possible question number one is, what is the initial measurement of the loans payable? Now. Here is the answer that we have come up based on our sample problem in the past episode. And as I've told you, the method of answering this first question is just the same regardless of whether you use the timeline technique or the amortization table. So again, I've told you many times before that the initial value is based on the proceeds received by the debtor. And if it's not given, then, principal minus the charges or the transaction costs. But if they are still absent, you can still get the initial value by means of future payments times the present value factor. And this factor can be present value of 1 or present value of 1 ordinary annuity factor or annuity due factor, whichever is more applicable. So in conclusion, we can say that we can actually solve the possible question number one using the amortization table. And you know what? It's also the same with question number two, which is what is the effective rate of the loans payable? We can actually get the effective rate by trial and error and interpolation if it's not given. So it doesn't matter if you are using the timeline or the amortization table you're still going to do the trial and error and interpolation if the effective rate is not given. Okay? Now, let's have the possible question number three, which is, what is the carrying value of the loans payable account in different dates? Like in this problem, we have what is the carrying value of the loans payable at the end of year one to year four. And these were the answers in the previous episodes using the timeline, right? Now, can the amortization table get these amounts? Answer, of course. It's actually here. It's in this last column. Okay, so that's it for possible question number three. Now, let's go to possible question number four, which is how much is the discount balance in different dates? Well, we can actually get the initial discount value by comparing the proceeds versus the principal. So in this problem or in the sample problem that we have had, we have 5 million as the principal and again the proceeds is just 4,657,835. Now, the difference of these two is the initial discount which is 342,165. Now, Let's put that here. So if we do that, then we can actually get these amounts like 342,165 minus the discount amortized in year one, which is 105,519. And we will get this 236,646, which is the discount balance at the end of year one. So it's just like that. Now, to get the end of year 2 discount balance, we have 342,165 
minus this 105,519. Again, that's the discount killed or amortized in year one. And then, minus this 89,236. And you will get this discount balance here of 147,410. So, in the year three, the discount balance is just 342,165 minus 105,519 and this 89,236 and then you minus this 70,836 and you will have this 76,574 and so on. So that's how you use the amortization table in answering the possible question number four. So you can continue getting these amounts by using the same process that I have told you, okay? So possible question number five, possible question number six and seven will be next after this. So now, let's go to the possible question number five, which is how much is the amortized discount? Well, it's literally provided here immediately in this fourth column or the fifth column if this one here will be considered as the first column. Okay, so let's go to the next question. On the sixth question, which is how much is the interest expense? As you can see, you can already see it immediately here in this column. And on the last question or the seventh question, how much of the yearly payments are effectively principal payments? So, we have these answers in the past episode. But the question is, how do we get it using the amortization table? Of course, by comparing the beginning balances. Like for example, at the beginning of year 1, the balance is 4,657,835. But a year after, it only became 3,763,354. So the difference is effective principal payment, which is 894,481 for year one. Okay? So that's how you do it in the effective amortization table. One more, okay? For year two, the beginning balance is again 3,763,354. But one year later again, the balance became only 2,852,590. So the difference is 910,764, which is this one. So you can continue the process yourself, okay? One thing is for sure. It's sure that you can also answer the seven possible measurement questions using the amortization table. So as a conclusion, it's up to you what to choose. You can choose the timeline technique or this amortization table. But for me, I'm going to still use the timeline analysis technique because I think it's much faster to solve problems or questions using that. So heads up, in the next episodes, I will be using the timeline technique. And also in the next episode, Let's have the accounting or recording related questions, okay? So let's end this lecture now to keep this video short. So if you've learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.